Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Well, thank you for joining us here for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. A disaster declaration coming out of Scott County. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders issued this declaration to help people in the county. After those recent rounds of severe weather earlier this month, the declaration will allow state agencies to give maximum assistance to the area. As we learn what that assistance will consist of, of course, we will bring you that information. Now, talking about weather here, let's check in with meteorologist Zach Scott. And Zach, it looks like no more flooding in our near future, maybe even some sunshine today. Yeah, sunshine today. We're dry today. We will get rain and thunderstorms in tomorrow and they'll produce some heavy downpours, but uh, we haven't had any rain the last couple of days. So I think we'll see some runoff, some low lying poor drainage areas could see some water pull up. But again, the thunderstorm chance is holding off one more day. The warmer weather building in ahead of that next front that will cool us down on the backside of that. And that cool weather will stick around for a handful of days. We're getting into the lower 60s for most of northwest Arkansas. A few upper 50s likely mixed in, in some spots, especially the Boston Mountains. We'll We'll start off with plenty of sunshine across the entire area and then we'll look for clouds to increase out of Oklahoma into Arkansas as we go through the day. Overall, we're looking at low to mid 60s scattered around the River Valley and the Washita's. We won't cool off as much overnight. South winds today gusting 20 to 25 miles per hour River Valley, 25 to 30 miles per hour Northwest Arkansas. That's driving in Gulf of Mexico moisture and that moisture uh, or more moisture rich air mass just doesn't cool off as much as the drier air that's been in place the last few days. We're only falling into the upper 40s, low 50s going into Thursday morning. A few scattered showers, patchy drizzle, 20-30% chance will be possible going into early tomorrow morning. And then those rain chances ramp up. We're likely going to watch a batch of scattered showers and thunderstorms in the morning hours, push off towards the east, a few spotty showers uh, late morning, early afternoon, then late afternoon into the evening. We'll watch another band of thunderstorms develop along a cold front. With this band, we'll watch the potential for some damaging wind gusts, some pockets of hell. And then south of I-40, I think there is a low-end tornado threat that we'll have to watch again south of I-40, closer to southeast Oklahoma. That pushes off towards the east by late evening, Joe. We're already drier, but that colder air is coming in. Could have a few flurries overnight while we're sleeping northwest Arkansas. Friday morning, stepping outside, temperatures 20s to the 30s in the River Valley. Northwest winds 10 to 20 miles per hour, making it feel like the teens and 20s. Joe. All right, thanks so much, Zach. Well, Springdale's mayor delivered his State of the City address on Tuesday. During that, Mayor Doug Sprouse talked about a special bond election coming up. People will head to the polls in May to vote on that issue. The mayor says he plans to use the money there to provide the city with a new fire station in an effort to address an unmet need for public safety. That's what the bond issue is about. Also saying this would shorten response times. And Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders has signed into law legislation making it easier to sue providers of gender affirming care for children. It's a move that could effectively reinstate a blocked ban on such care. It allows anyone who got gender affirming care as a minor to file a malpractice lawsuit against their doctor for up to 15 years after they turn 18. The new law, though, won't take effect until 90 days after the legislature adjourns this year's session, which isn't expected to happen until next month at the earliest. Meanwhile, Crystal Bridge is bringing in another high profile person to speak this month. Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor will be the featured guest in their family talk event next Wednesday. The Supreme Court Justice will appear virtually for a conversation from three to four that afternoon. She'll discuss her new children's book and answer questions submitted by children attending this event at Crystal Bridges. And Fayetteville City Planners raising concerns about plans for a new development at the site of the old 112 drive-in. Developers are calling it the Aronson and hope to bring a draft house theater to the site with a scaled back drive in. At a Fayetteville Planning Commission meeting this week, concerns were raised about traffic and water drainage issues at the site. They decided to hold off on any further planning until after the next meeting. Now, in addition to Arkansas's first Alamo draft house, the Aronson development could also include more businesses and new housing. We'll bring you any developments from the March 27th meeting. And some big changes coming to Northwest Arkansas National Airport. They broke ground Tuesday on a multi-million dollar modernization project. XNA leaders say it will modernize the terminal and make things a bit more efficient with renovations to the baggage claim area. Once work is complete, you'll see artwork from local artists hanging in the terminal area.
X and A is the front door to the Northwest Arkansas community and the first impression that many visitors get, uh, you know, to our community. So, um, you know, it's it's real exciting to see the, uh, the have the opportunity to improve that first impression. Now, all of the renovations come at a cost of about $34 million. We're told it should be done by spring of 2025. Passengers shouldn't have to worry about closures due to the construction. Well, it's one of the worst economic setbacks to hit Van Buren in quite a while. We're hearing from our business experts on what led to the closing of the Tyson plant. 5 News anchor Darren Bob has the story. Lance Turner is the editor of Arkansas Business, our 5 News content partner. He says while it was a shock to hear of this decision, it wasn't unexpected. Tyson has been struggling to get its poultry business running right practically since the pandemic. And those struggles are now showing up in earnings reports, management changes, and now moves like this one this week. One thing we know is that the company has had trouble just keeping pace with chicken demand, which has been historic. Uh, I mean, think about all the chicken restaurants you see out there, right? Uh, it's wildly popular. And even with that higher demand, Turner says the economy hasn't been good to Tyson poultry. Prices for everything have gone up, so input costs like uh, feed have gone up, but also labor costs. So that's put real pressure on profit margins in that poultry segment. So basically, uh, chicken for Tyson has become less profitable, even as demand has been bigger than it's ever been. He says Tyson's bottom line struggles date back a few years. In fiscal 2021, Tyson posted a $625 million operating loss in the chicken business. And in the first quarter of this fiscal year, uh, operating income for that division fell by 71%. So clearly, they are working to try to get this uh, under control. In the meantime, Van Buren Chamber of Commerce President Julie Murray says the town will bounce back. This community is very resilient. It pulls together very well. Um, and works together very well. So we're all going to get together and be prepared for um, whatever these um, these team members need from us and what Tyson needs from us. We're going to work with them not only on the transition of their employees, but also the future purpose of that building. She says the city will definitely miss Tyson Foods. Tyson has been a great corporate citizen and community partner to us. And that was 5 News anchor Darren Bob. Now the Van Buren Chamber, along with the Crawford County Adult Education Center, will be holding a career fair in April to help Tyson employees find new jobs. It's set for Wednesday, April 26, but a location has not been announced just yet. Well, thank you for joining us here today for your top headlines. I'm Joe Ellison. Make sure to catch up with us again tomorrow right here for more weather and news.